So uh, I'm going to ask you a question. How many of, of you have actually brought something online? People who did buy something online, just say me or yes on the chat. Yes, we have. Okay. So there's a surprising number of people since this COVID-19 situation, a lot of people are forced to buy online. And uh, to my surprise, uh, the people I expected that would have uh, bought something online earlier, I, to my surprise, I found out that they, they have never bought anything online. So it's quite, an, quite, it's quite a discovery to me, actually. So what I'm saying is basically, if you can't buy products and services online in 21st century, you are not, you are not I mean, you don't belong in this century. So do the people first, at, at minimum, should know how to buy online using paying using their debit card, credit card, or any other payment method. That is, their bank transfer does not count. So, so if if the uh, in terms of government of Sri Lanka also considered, I would suggest that if we, if they could launch an online or if they could launch a five minute video on every channel out there saying this is how you buy online by using an example product on an example website then that will alleviate the fear of people buying online and that will ease the operations for the government services as well it's just a suggestion so that but i haven't seen that done anywhere so if if we do that i mean the the congestion and the traffic uh, on the on the uh, and the queues waiting out people hundreds of people waiting outside pharmacies supermarkets can be minimized so just just a suggestion so if we have that infrastructure currently there are about uh, five about somewhere between 500 to 1 million people who are willing to buy online in sri lanka using a debit card or a credit card so we need to get that number way up because we have an internet population of close to 8 million somewhere between 7 to 8 million so it's so yeah, yeah, like one seventh one eighth of the population is actually buying online are ready to buy online so we need to get that number up so in this lecture, I'm going to consider, so this is basically, uh, some of you may know, this is the new product development life cycle. So if you come up with a new product or a service, this is the life cycle most of you have to go through. So there, are, there can be other steps here, maybe it's nine steps. So I'm going to talk about the seven stages depicted here. And from these seven stages, I'm going to pick out certain steps. I'm going to omit some because it is not the, in the scope of this particular lecture. So this idea generation is not in the scope of this lecture. Idea screening is not that, uh, that is, is also not in the scope of this, sector, uh, this uh, lecture. And so what I'm going to talk about is actually concept development and testing market strategy, business analysis, testing and commercialization. So these steps actually includes what I'm going to talk about. It, it wraps the e-commerce and the digital marketing arena really well. So we'll go one by one to these steps. Again, as I told you, this is a large subject, so I can only cover a small portion of it. So I think my efforts, uh, I have done my best to cover that as far as possible. Uh, so concept development and testing. So, so when you have a new business idea or when you have a product, you have to develop a you have to first come up with a concept right so in order to in order for a concept to appear you have to uh, have one of the following scenarios either your solution either you are producing a solution to a problem or you see a new opportunity that is not there now currently but it will come up in the future so you are going to be prepared for that and you you might be responding through a threat from a competitor or or, for, or a different type of uh, uh, market forces so you, you might be responding to a threat and there can be uh, certain things, certain concepts that are done purely for the research value or research and development. Maybe we, if we consider pharmaceuticals, if we consider pure and applied research, so that, that kind of uh, goes into that particular category. And some of those research actually end up as a successful commercial product. So we have seen that over the years. And whatever you uh, do, whatever the concept that arises from these particular scenarios, you are going to have to test it out, right? You can't just go ahead, uh, uh, spend uh, 1 million, 2 million, 10 million rupees and go to the market with, okay, I have this product, everybody buy. Nobody's going to buy, right? Because you have to test the market first. So that's where the minimum viable product comes in. So the minimum viable product is a product. It's a, actually a bare bones product. It's, it's a prototype of what you are going to do. And with the minimum effort and minimum investment, you are going to test it out to the market, right? So with that, you can actually see if the product is going to work or not. So I'm sure you are clear about the, 
the solution to a problem new opportunity likewise for example if we take the covid thing itself it's actually in a way it's a threat in a way it's a new opportunity in a way we are providing solutions to a problem we have seen ventilators built in sri lanka that never before seen we have seen uh, good quality uh, icu beds built in sri lanka as a solution to a problem and there's a new opportunity for me example this is this is actually a new opportunity uh, as it uh, as much as it is a very saddening situation for the rest of the world there are new opportunities for companies the best example here i'm going to give you 10 seconds what is the company that has come i mean that has grown more than 1000% in this particular period we all know the company just put it into the chat box if you can exactly so the very platform that we are using to do this webinar is that company zoom so that so that's a new opportunity i mean they were in the market right everybody was in the market so they had the opportunity to scale as the requirement grows and it, the software is quite simple compared to the other solutions and uh, uh, given that uh, and also they, they 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 were then targeted by hackers and attackers so there are a lot of problems like that also but generally speaking they have found this particular scenario as a new opportunity and they have thrived he has actually the founder has become a billionaire he was in the millionaires list now he's in the billionaires list that's like in a couple of weeks time so i was talking about the minimal viable product so just keep that in mind minimum viable product okay so now we are going into the e-commerce business models so now we have a minimum viable product so what is the model that this product belongs to so this uh, this product can be a b2b product so one of the best known examples uh, for b2b business model in e-commerce is we all know it's alibaba it's everybody talks about alibaba uh, a company like alibaba for example is providing services to another business another trading partner to sell their products so likewise we can also take uh, banking systems insurance systems where two companies can uh join their data as well as employee data maybe financial data and then they do a business transaction on top of that data that can be done that can be considered not just not, not just data like physical products even that can be considered as a b2b transaction b2b business and there's b2c which is the most common right so if we if you go to an e-commerce website in sri lanka we go to a supermarket website or whatever that kind of uh, product retail market website we go buy a product we get it delivered to the home so that is b2c we all know that so what is c to c give me a good example on the chat where you you understand a business as a c to c business can anyone think of a business where it's c to c Uber, okay. Uber, Uber, Uber is kind of. Oh yeah, we can we can call Uber a C to C business because the Uber company takes a commission, but the actual service is provided by the consumer to the consumer. Uh, Sanjay, I can't hear you. I think you have muted. Okay, sorry. Where 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 did I go muted? Sure. Uh, in the B to C or C to C. C to C, I guess. Okay, C to C. So yes, Uber can be considered as C to C because uh, the service is provided by a, a consumer to a consumer, and the Uber company takes a commission out of it. So likewise, eBay, eBay auctioning is a is a good example of C to C. And drop shipping, in certain instances, can be C to C. Now there are things like C to B. So consumer to business. Consumer actually sells products and services to a business. Give me a good example on that. Can anybody think of an example for C to B? Exactly, good one, good one. Osreen, uh, you are here, no? All right, freelancing sites like Fiverr. The best example, all we all know, is Fiverr, Upwork, stuff like that, where we can sell our services to any corporates, any businesses, or other consumers. So that is a good example of C to B. So I have given two links on this slide, which I'm going to share later on with you via the chat, where you can read more about these business models. And uh, there are examples on how to go about each, each and every one of them. Uh, 
So make sure to read though. I will put them in the chat later on after the lecture. And then I, I ask you to remember the minimum viable product. So we know the models. Our product or service is going to put in, I mean, it's going to get categorized into one of those models. And we have the minimum viable product. So how do I mean, we have the map on, on the minimal viable product. So these are the ways that I have depicted on how to do a minimum viable product. Since this is e-commerce, all you have to do is try to find a way, try to find a platform to sell your product to a consumer. So the easiest way you can do this is via Google Forms, WhatsApp, or FB pages. So we have seen a lot of pages putting up FB pages. And then this they advertise their product, get the inquiry through the inbox, do, a, do an offline transaction, and deliver the product. And we have seen that on WhatsApp as well. In China also, this is very much automated through WeChat where they have the automated money transferring option inside the chat itself. So it's a complete in-commerce transaction inside the app itself. But here in Sri Lanka, we have to do the offline payments uh, up to uh, until now. So Google Forms is another way of collecting customer data and then approaching them one by one later on. And then we can use free trial software to test out our idea. So in terms of e-learning, which I am into, I used... Uh, Zoom, as well as some other soft, other few softwares a couple of years ago, as a free trial to test out my online learning skills. So that is an example of using free trial software. Also, there are a lot of free trial software for different different purposes. You can even there are there are software for uh, creating graphics, creating videos. If you are a videographer, you can use free trial software and then test out your abilities and use a paid software to go to market. Likewise, you can do a lot of things. And also there are software where it is allowed to track your inventory. Like there are even ERP softwares that you can try track your inventory, sell products. And after a month or so, you have to pay and buy the software like that. There are a lot of free stuff. So you can test out your MVP there. And also, due, during this COVID-19 in Sri Lanka, we have got, we have, there, there were like, hundreds, literally hundreds of platforms coming up to support e-commerce merchants, right? If you have a grocery store and now you can't get the customers, but you have to reach the customers and get the orders. How you do that? You have to go for an e-commerce store, but e-commerce stores were there, right? From, from before, but people weren't using them because of various reasons. Either you have to pay after a certain while, either you don't have the necessary support and, and most important, can, can we mute the mics, Chadiga? Just keep my mic open. Yes, I will uh, mute all. You can unmute. Uh, okay. After that. Yes, Sanjay, you can unmute. Okay. Yes. You can hear me now, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, so suddenly we have seen a uh, we have seen a lot of websites popping up in Sri Lanka where they are willing to support our merchants, our grocery shop grocery owners to have their own shop, own small shop free of charge, and they are also providing customer support. So here I have listed a few. One is shop here, one is we shop, one is order online, and there are many others, right? So you have seen uh, hundreds of ads going on Facebook, you, free e-commerce shop, you can start with us selling likewise. Each of them are providing a different level of service. You have to figure out which one's best. But you can actually test your minimum viable product. If you are selling masks, for example, masks, for example, you can test out selling masks on free of charge on one of these platforms. And it's quite easy for you to get into business. And then comes uh, selling product on an existing marketplace. So we have a lot of existing marketplaces like Takas, Wow, Daras, eBay, Amazon, dropshipping, right? Uh, dropshipping, I mean, forget dropshipping for now, focus on the rest. So we have those marketplaces already in Sri Lanka where you can list your product and start selling. But all of this has a learning curve as well as uh, you need to have a basic idea of how to manage a business, not the e-commerce business. If you have the basic idea of how to manage the business, that's the first thing you are going to have. Then you can get into the technical stuff by reading, coming to lectures like this and maybe watching YouTube videos. And there's a good resource in Sri Lanka free of charge to support this on Facebook as a group, which is called Online Entrepreneurs Club Sri Lanka, o OECSL. Just search it on Facebook and maybe you can get in and see what's going on there. It's, it's kind of like the central point for all these e-commerce activities in Sri Lanka. Uh, I mean, in the, in, the very, in, the, in the community scale. Okay, now let's move on. So when you have the minimum viable product and you, you cannot use one, any of these solutions, 
and you have a little bit of a technical knowledge and a team with you you are welcome to go for an open source platform so when you go for an open source platform the downside is that obviously you need to know the technical skills and you need to understand the supply chain the e-commerce supply chain from the supplier to the consumer and the after sales so all that all that process must be carried out by you it's 100 percent on your own control the control is yours but you need to know how to handle it if you if not you are going to fail but the previous stuff i mentioned previous free platforms is taking away some of that pain to their platform and you can focus on actually supplying the product and delivering the product and then enjoy the uh, uh, benefits uh, and at the end of the month enjoy your profit so uh, by the way I'm, i don't think that they will remain free forever but for now it's free so if you're going for open open source platforms you can you have to contact a web developer or at least a web designer at in the sense like to set up one of these platforms oh yeah you have to have your knowledge yourself it's very easy though so woocommerce is based on wordpress if you have, if you know how to do a wordpress blog you can do the woocommerce plug in there and start the business magento is a separate large scale community as well as enterprise edition e-commerce application likewise xcart and presta shops and may, there are many others free of charge where you can download have your own hosting uh, and set up your own shop but the thing is you need to know how to configure the shop how how to attach a payment gateway how to con uh, how to communicate with a uh, let's say del delivery person or delivery company and how to handle orders how to talk to customers so that entire spectrum is of skills you need to have or your team needs to have in order to do this so that's that it's free of charge only you, you will incur some pay some fees obviously overheads like for example server overheads uh, like that but uh, compared to a paid solution this is the starting point if you want to go 100% your own control and for customizability and then there are paid platform options which take most of those headache out from you and you are left with delivering i mean having handling your customers on focusing your business we have a chat uh... is woocommerce secure okay uh, it's not that woocommerce is secure the how you implement is is the problem i'm going to ask this question since it is directly related to woocommerce so woocommerce is by essence it's a community software right so everybody can see what's going on everybody can download and install what happens is if i get woocommerce version 1 and install it in my website and one month later they release woocommerce version 2 and i don't tend, intend to update it i am using the existing woocommerce one after a certain while people find several uh, loopholes or several bugs in the system version 1 so what they are going to do is they are going to report to woocommerce saying okay we have we are we have been using woocommerce for a while and we have seen these bugs these are these are possible entry points for a hacker please fix them so the woocommerce team actually goes in and fix them and they release a bulletin now saying we have fixed these these these, these bugs on this particular version version 1 so i have never bothered to update from version 1 to version 2 right so what happens is with sorry with that woocommerce team releases version 1.5 as a security patch so i ignore that also i am only in version 1 so what happens is the hackers get the bulletin directly from woocommerce saying okay version 1 sites have these particular uh, vulnerabilities and they are going to instantly what they do is they scan the internet or scan websites who are having version 1 was not version 1.5 so suddenly i am having version 1 i have all those listed bugs and vulnerabilities so i am attacked so that's the most common reason that people are getting hacked so in order to do, we need mitigate that all you have to do is um, have the plugins as well as the main woocommerce thing updated and also also follow the basic rules of password uh, protection like uh, you don't you don't have you, you don't have a six letter password you should go for a 10 letter password with a combination of letters and other symbols likewise you are you are not going to say uh, my site slash my site.com slash wp admin as your admin url you are going to change it to something else so other people cannot guess it like that there are a lot of security stuff that you can do so coming back to paid platforms these all these headaches are actually taken by that paid platform and automated or in that platform they have handled it in a way so we don't have to worry about all that we only thing we have to do is we have to focus on uh, on do, doing the business correct getting the customer satisfaction that's what we have to focus on so these are two platforms shopify.com is a world renowned one in sri lanka we have ecommerce.lk and many others there are so you can check these out so if you use a paid platform you can focus on providing the best service to the customer but 
the, the, the downside here is that you don't have 100% control. You can't do whatever you want in these platforms. You cannot customize them. You have to go by their rules. So in a nutshell, so we have discussed how to come up with a concept, how to do the MVP, and how to implement the MVP. I have given you several options to implement the MVP. In e-commerce, this, this is kind so in a nutshell, so I have what I have presented, it's what is called a tech cloud, where the terms of e-commerce are visible here. Right. So these are the terms that come with e-commerce. So I have covered a few of them, and the rest you can actually search and you know go ahead and study. So let's move on to the next section of our thing, the digital marketing aspect. So, so we have the product, we have the MVP set up. So we do the market analysis. We haven't, remember, we haven't spent thousands or millions of rupees so far. We are going to test the market with our product or with our e-commerce store. As we, I mean, we can either sell a product through an existing e-commerce store like Takas, Daras or whatever, or we can have our own e-commerce store to sell our own product, or we can have an e-commerce store to let other people sell on our store. So all these are possibilities. So whatever you do, you have to do a market analysis. So assuming that because of the scope of this particular lecture, so I told you that I am going to skip few steps. So one and two I have skipped. That's why I said preliminary analysis is already done. So it, it is done. That, that, is not, that is not in the scope of this particular lecture. So we do a limited campaign now. So we are going to do a limited marketing campaign for the product. First, this is not a digital marketing campaign or anything else. We are going to test. We are going to ask our friends and family to log in or buy the product, try the product out. Right? If you are going to, if you are if you're having an e-commerce store, we are asking our friends to go log into the store, maybe buy the product. And try the product and let us know the feedback about the product as well as the checkout experience, as well as the e-commerce experience. We need to get them from our friends. So get some honest friends because there are some friends who uh, I mean they are good, I mean just because they don't want to hurt your feelings they are not going to tell you the exact truth about the experience so don't i mean those friends are okay but i i prefer going to people with uh, i mean uh, who can tell something to your face right if this is not good it's not good so those people will stop wasting your time and help you actually to actually grow so Use social media to a certain extent in your personal profiles, maybe a page, company page, to do a limited uh, marketing on your product and services to try the product out. And this is where it gets important. Now you have to use the analytics. So the base analytics tool we use is Google Analytics. Everybody does. And there's another tool which I use for a great extent that helps me to understand how the consumer or the customer behaves in my web properties or, or mobile properties, whether I have a mobile app or an e-commerce website, people come to my website and they do certain stuff, like right? they try to buy a product on my website. So if I can see how they actually behave in my website, I can actually optimize my experience. So this is really important. For example, we are doing a website thinking that the user would come to a website, go to the categories, search a product, buy the product, and go out of the website after checking out. That's the ideal, uh, ideal behavior, right? But to, to your surprise, even uh, once you are launched, you see 1,000 visitors coming in, not a single sale. Right? Why? So, so in order to find that out, you, you have to use the analytics. You can either use Google Analytics to see which pages the people are leaving the site on. Like, for example, they land on home page, they go to a certain page. After that, you don't see any traffic. That means that page has a problem. So you can identify that page from Google Analytics. And exactly what is happening on that page? that you can actually view real time or near real time through a software through a service like mouse flow so this mouse flow is giving out free like 500 or so recordings where they they record everything the users do on your site except for their passwords and their privacy data they record everything you do on their sites and they give you the recording so you can see what they have done so recently i made a really interesting discovery where i have this elearning.lk which is a learning management system where i, I sell online courses so what happens is, uh, on the uh, so when I, I boosted a campaign, which is a, which is for a language course, Hindi language course, and I, I boosted a campaign for a few days, and I see only few people bought, and it's not as much as expected. Sales weren't as uh, much as I expected. So I, I installed mouse flow and try to figure out what they were actually doing in the course page. To my surprise, uh, uh, it's not actually a surprise. A surprise is coming after this one. I already knew that the 90% of the users are mobile based, right? If I push an ad on Facebook, don't think it will land on people's laptops. No, 90% of them will come from the mobile. 
so your mobile experience has to be near perfect so i see people logging in from from their mobile logging into my application that is also fine going to the course page they try to buy but the problem is before they buy they have to buy they can check out free lessons right i have given there are about 30 lessons in the course i have given three lessons free so this free lessons they can watch right free of charge they can watch what happens is when they try to watch when they try to click the uh, when they try to touch that link the le lesson is actually opened uh, yes it's working it's actually opened but it is opened at the bottom of the page so since he is viewing it in mobile he have to scroll down to see that particular opened lesson but nobody is getting the idea on the mobile that you have to scroll down because it doesn't show a scroll bar right so you are touching 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 and nothing gets open they leave the page so i saw that from mouse flow what i did was i i took the same uh, open lesson lesson and put it on top of the listings on top of the lessons lesson listings so when you touch the lesson the video player comes up on top now as uh, as compared to previous which is it was below so now people can actually watch the uh, sample lesson and then they they would go on to buy so i did that and came, do, did a did a boost and it was working right like 10 15 people bought so that's what i mean by testing out using analytics to test out and also this can be applied to another level where if you if you are not confident about your mobile experience you can just target your advertising on facebook even to people who use desktops right so even though uh, if you if you just generally push it out to 100 people 90 percent will watch on mobile but if you just target desktops only whatever advertising you do will land on desktops only or laptops only so they will they will be so so you are kind of feeling comfortable because you know how to control that experience or the other or vice versa if you don't if you want to ignore desktop and just target mobile that also you can do on these social media platforms when it comes to advertising management so that's the next that's the next step so i'm basically asking you to do a simple test with your friends and family see what they do on your site and then improve and then identify the ideal customer so your your business can have several different customers for me in my experience since i'm doing a learning product my ideal customer if i am doing course if i am selling courses to age uh, from grade one to grade seven eight up to grade even up to ten okay let's say grade one to grade ten all these courses the my ideal customer is not the student it's the parents so how so let's take take a parent for example so if if we say what would be the age range of a parent where they have a kid that is going to school in 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 grade 1 to grade 10 so i would say a grade 10 student is 15 years old so let's say the median marrying age of a sri lankan family is 27 for example uh, and maybe 25 so to, let's say that so 25 plus 15 is 40 so uh, leave it or take it I, I i will have another 5 years so generally I should target somewhere between 25 to 45. That's my parents. Those are my parents. And on Facebook, you can also do uh, do a filtering where you, if you have a child, you can target that also. So that is my customer base. So I'm going to, I have identified to a certain extent who my customers are in general terms, and then I push it up. And then I can actually, uh, and when they come into the site, I use the same analytics, same behavioral analysis, and then figure out who the who my ideal customer is sometimes i have to call the customer in person and ask whether my experience is okay have you have you had a good time buying stuff like that and then likewise improve use analytics repeat repeat the process and also do a complete analysis on site see what they are up to also so business strategy is not is something that i am not going to talk about here in detail because it is out of my scope but i'm going to talk about the marketing strategy which is part of the business strategy right so i'm going to talk about the marketing plan now uh, for the business strategy part now we have who are our customers the people are coming at a limited scale now we can analyze how the how should the product go product how should the product develop and then have a long term plan so i'm going to cover digital marketing in a single slide it's 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 really impossible to cover it but i have to because of the time constraints uh, so digital marketing so this is this falls under that new product development life cycle market entry and commercialization so digital marketing in a nutshell this is the implementation i am not talking about marketing strategies there are marketing strategies and marketing theory right so you, you can take uh, uh, i mean 
the seven p's like guys there are a lot of marketing strategies out there marketing models even so i'm not going to talk about those i'm just going to talk about the implementation so the facebook you can do a you can obviously create facebook pages you can have facebook groups or you can take membership of facebook groups you can boost ads on your page based on the demographics of your customers you can do live videos promoting promoting your product you can do short videos promoting your product for example if you are selling masks think think of different kind of one two minute video short videos you can put out these days use for just for masks right i have seen a lot in other countries as well and then the influencers influencers are people who are already popular on facebook for different different reasons and we can pay them and use them to market our product so we see that lot uh, we see a lot of that on youtube where all these people like ratta janai priya and like they they come and market a product right so those are influencers so instagram is the same although they it doesn't necessarily have something called uh, pages and groups and boosting because it's 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 kind of like more more it's more into your personal branding as well as influencer marketing instagram you can use that for for that and also you can actually boost facebook ads into instagram and then comes youtube where you have you can have youtube channel and where you, you can uh, you can do periodic videos maybe use an uh, youtube or instagram or facebook influencer to get traffic into your youtube channel and then get users subscribed to your channel so if you are if you are selling a cooking product or if you are selling something like that you can actually start a cooking channel right so if you are if you are selling vegetables or if you are selling a certain type of meat you can have a cooking channel where the product used is always your product and you are going to teach people free on how to use different recipes so they subscribe and learn at the meantime you can also market your product i mean if you buy the product within the next 5 minutes using this link you will get a 10% discount go to this particular website or facebook page or whatever pay it up and then buy like that you can do and there's tiktok obviously nowadays very popular but the thing is uh, there are different market segments right you can't target tiktok Um, I mean, you cannot target uh, the same advertisement for TikTok and LinkedIn. It's totally, totally different uh, uh, demographics. So, likewise, you have to select and then approach each platform. So, I, we simply don't have time to go through all of that. And then you can do paid Google search and publish a network advertising. So, you can pay Google. So, somebody search for something like, for example. Let's say uh, a vent. Um, uh, no, not a ventilator. Let's. Okay, we'll take the same example. Masks, right? So, uh, uh, surgical masks. So they search. So we can have uh, we can pay Google on the first two listings. We can ha have our listing, our paid listing, where they can buy the mask come into our website. So notice that how important all these optimizations are because we are actually paying Google to publish our ad to a person searching for that particular product. when they see our ad they will click on it come to our website and they still have to go through our entire process of checking out and then buy it this is a very long process we have to optimize it to the max otherwise you will lose the customer you 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 paid up google in dollars they came to your site because your site is not good they have left you lost the client as well as you lost the revenue or you lost your money because you have advertised for nothing so it's a very complex task that you have to go through and then of course if there are blogging blogging you can do blogging this can be done in sing hello english or whatever language and they, you can share that in your facebook page facebook group youtube uh, you can actually do the blog article read the content in the facebook uh, sorry youtube as a video you can do a blog article you can read the same content on youtube as a video right so there's a, there you have a video you have a instagram post you have facebook uh, content as well so all these platforms are covered using the same blog article and then you can obviously market events that so we are in an event like that even though this is not for commercial purposes obviously you can have your own webinar to market your product or service yeah it's free of charge for the customer so you give something of value to them as well as on the side you can market your product and there are things called podcasts you can check them out and this and then comes uh, seo so seo and linkedin i put it on the same line for a reason because uh, if you have a proper linkedin profile then most of your seo is basically done so if if you you can go to my linkedin profile as an example there are a lot of people who have done better profiles than me but for starters you can check out my linkedin profile just do you don't need i don't need to put the link even just 
uh, Google's analytics, and the first thing that comes up is LinkedIn, my LinkedIn profile. That's why I said, if you have proper LinkedIn profile for your company as well as yourself, you don't actually have to do search engine optimization for your website because those two will act as the traffic generating links for your website. But there, uh, but there's a separate thing called search engine optimization where obviously you have to improve or optimize your website, hire a professional maybe, and then check against certain tools, whether your site is up to date and according to Google guidelines, whether you are up there or not. If you are not, you have to update it accordingly using the SEO guidelines provided by Google and many other companies. So that all these can be done online with free checks and maybe you can hire a uh, expert for for just a day or two and then get a report done and then there is a there's something new called performance marketing which is a deep subject so all these things that i have talked uh, that i have talked about are coming to the performance marketing paradigm it's already here so the next few years we won't be talking about these as separate like this we may talk about is under a one umbrella term called performance marketing so now we have the business, we have the marketing channel going on. We have coming, people are coming, they try to buy, maybe you have to have a customer service uh, department, you know, which is what I am, what I am experiencing these days because, because my e-learning product has taken off and a lot of students and a lot of teachers are actually using it to teach their online classrooms. So what happens is now I am setting up my customer service department so they can handle the inquiries. Roughly we are getting about thousand calls a day. So I am also getting about 300 to 400 WhatsApp requests, WhatsApp messages, which I have to fulfill. Amidst all of that, I am here teaching you guys. So that, that is there. So customer service is the main thing. Whatever the product you have, doesn't matter how good technically it is. If you don't have the customer service, you are done. And your team and its composition. So your team is really important. Your team needs to have administrators, programmers, marketeers, uh, salespeople. Right, uh, HR people. I mean, th these are actually roles, not people. Sorry, these are actually roles. One person can act several roles. So your team needs to have that composition. If you are a single person job, then you have to outsource most of these to people that you can also find online. Do a couple of searches, and then relationship with the suppliers. So if you are drop shipping, basically you need to have a good, really good relationship with your suppliers. So drop shipping is basically you are charging the customer. You advertise a product which is not yours, you are not keeping inventory, you are not keeping it in your house, in your warehouse, no. You are just advertising someone else's product, you get the money from the client, you keep a margin and pay the supplier. Supplier needs to make sure that it gets delivered on time under your branding. Or maybe it's not branded at all. Or you can white label it to your brand. So that's the basics, uh, basic explanation of dropshipping, which is used by a lot of Sri Lankans now, and they are having a lot of success with it. So you have to have good relationship, not just with your suppliers, customers, your team, your employees, like, and you also have to have financial discipline, right? So especially in these times where, where the future is uncertain. So if you have good financial discipline, you will know to use your financial sparingly so you can sustain it for a long period to come, long time to come. And obviously use common sense, right? You have to use common sense. Uh, if you don't have the common sense, I mean, you can't, you can't live your life, let alone conduct a business. Uh, so I think I have covered, all right, 45 minutes, I have covered the entire thing. So we have 15 minutes for questions. So I hope uh, I did justice to your request, Chadika. Yes, of course. <laughs> so if anybody's having questions, uh, I'm here to answer. So I'm watching the chat. I think, uh, yes, the chat books, there I saw some questions. So if I miss the questions, just uh, put it again. Can we have the presentation slides by email? Uh, Shadika, how, how are you going to go about that? Yeah, we can uh, share. Uh, if you can send it to me, I should okay, be I'll, able I'll to I'll mail share. you. I'll yes. mail you. Yeah. Can I just ask a quick question? I'm Hasita here. Okay. Um, just in regards to um, open source platforms and play, paid pet. Uh, paid, sorry, paid platforms like yeah. Shopify. Um, what? Why would I mean uh, the pros and the cons of the two of them? Um, why would someone want to um, like when when they're changing? Like say initially they go with a paid platform and then they are going to change to an open source platform. I mean, what kind of troubles are there? Are there troubles? Can you keep the same um, you know links etc. for 
existing customers? Well, uh, links in the sense, links of uh, links to, of like customers. Your, your address, like you know, you, whether it's a website address or um, where the customer has to be directed to. Okay, Shopify pay, Shopify paid version allows you to have your own domain where you can, when you switch, you can use the same domain since it is yours, obviously, to have right. your own website. So the link won't change. But the thing is, Shopify URLs, then you have to rewrite it. Some of them. Uh, there's a technique called of URL rewriting in SEO we talk about. But generally, it's not a problem of switching, but the problem arises when the experience is different, right? The Shopify experience is a certain fixed experience, standardized experience now, right? Everybody uses Shopify, now they know how to use Shopify. But, yeah. but I mean, that kind of templates people are familiar with. But if your site is a bit complex than that, then you will start losing sales. So you have to have the experience matched, usability matched. And Thank the payment you. gateways, of course, when you when you break away from Shopify and maybe go select a Sri Lankan payment gateway. And if you had a lot of foreign customers, those people will obviously not pay for the Sri Lankan gateway because they don't trust the Sri yes. Lankan gateway. Right. Right. Thanks a lot. Okay. What is the tool we can see customers experience that is called mouse flow mouse flow. So I'm going to put a uh, mouse flow. It's on the chat. I'm going to put that. So there's a website, you can have a free trial there. And also, I'm going to put those two links. This is one where you can read more about e-commerce business models. This is the other one. Can you explain a bit more about Fiverr marketing? Yeah, I was I was on Fiverr for two years in 2000 from 2012 to 2013, end of 2013. And my Fiverr revenue at the time alone was about 60,000 rupees per month. I did it as part time. So when I got married, actually, most of my expenses were covered from my Fiverr revenue. But Fiverr since then had changed a lot. So how, now I see there are thousands of sellers for the same service, same gig. There are thousands of sellers. So it's really hard for a newcomer to start earning money through Fiverr just by listing on Fiverr. So what you have to do is you have to have your own audience built somehow using other social media tool, tools, maybe writing articles. For example, the two articles I just shared with you are written by normal people like you. right? So I can go to medium.com tomorrow, have my own profile and write an article. About what? About e-commerce in general or digital marketing in general. I share my knowledge and at the very end, I'm going to say, if you want to try out my product or get my services, this is my fire profile, right? So first I have to establish that I am a, uh, I'm an authority on the subject. Then at the very end, I can market my services where that will uh, act as a traffic generation source for your fire profile where they order stuff once once you get few orders of course on fiverr and if you do a complete good delivery the fiverr algorithm will suggest to more people will suggest you for more people where then you can have the ball rolling otherwise it's really hard what you think about starting digital marketing business in sri lanka mm, performance marketing can we get uh, you can get the slides yes uh, yeah you can i mean digital marketing business in sri lanka the thing is there are a lot of people trying to do this right some people with knowledge, some people without knowledge. So it's really hard to distinguish between who's a good guy and who's the bad guy. So this is, it is, as it is for us, it is the same as to the client. So most clients in Sri Lanka, I have seen are coming to us and going to different places where they are already disappointed. Where they are already disappointed with the results they got from a previous supplier and they don't trust the industry anymore. That is a very sad situation and that is there. So. My recommendation is, of course, have a website, do all the things I just mentioned and do more and maybe try to market to a different country, right? So maybe on your articles, if you, if you write an article in medium, maybe it include a few keywords about a different country or a different place, or maybe you just do a Facebook campaign or something else to a different country. So like that, you can try, try it out. You can try it out. Or, or simply, if you do, if you're on LinkedIn, that's the easiest way to do this. If you're on LinkedIn, and if you can spend at least one hour a day for about six months, and you can handle your profile really professionally, and approach people 
I mean, not in the not in a way to sell your product, but in a way to help them out, as well as uh, uh, as well as establishing yourself as an authority on the subject. LinkedIn will give you the leads, so you can actually go and reach the other countries. So it's a very, really, really good way of reaching other countries is LinkedIn. I can't tell you exactly which way you want to do. I'm doing it my way. You have to find out yours. Is there any specific platforms to use Fiverr marketing examples? Uh, uh, I'm not clear about the question is uh, if you are if you are going to have a marketing gig on Fiverr then check out what other people have done what other top five sellers are doing on Fiverr maybe try to copy them and differentiate a bit that's a strategy that you can use thank you Lalit Jaisingh uh, what do you think about the bell curve of this current purchasing pattern personally I cannot wait to buy goods on my own experience. okay so this is a really good question so all this particular hype about e-commerce and online buying and all that came with COVID-19, right? So it, in, in a way, I would believe that the 80-20 rule applies here. So when the country goes back to normal, 80% of the people will go to their own ways, old ways. They will go back to their old ways of lifestyle. 20% will prefer the new change and they will stick to the new change. But even that 80% are going back to their normal lifestyle with this knowledge, with this new knowledge that they have an alternative. So that's a really, really good plus sign for the future where they, we can actually improve our products and services. And also I have to add something to that as well. Uh, if we can have that population mentality that uh, people are unafraid of buying online, if we can have that, a lot of our startups will also be successful. Because currently we are seeing a 90% failure rate of our startup businesses, especially in the tech field, tech startups, right? So uh, since I'm in the tech field, I can speak for that. So the reason being, there are not too many early adapters in Sri Lanka, right? A lot of people are waiting someone else to buy and recommend the product. So you have to be an early adapter. What to do to have to be an early adapter? You have to have money that you can uh, spend on. Uh, for recreation purpose, I mean, you have to have additional income, additional money to you can spend on whatever you like. So a lot of people doesn't have that, uh, doesn't have that uh, possibility. So they need to. Act, uh, so also the other one is they are afraid of buying online. So if we can solve at least one of the two, in this case buying online, if we can alleviate that fear, then the startups will actually have a good time to roll out their product and come to a mature state. I hope that will happen soon. Uh, in Sri Lanka, what is the best place? I cannot actually go and endorse a particular gateway here, but there are a lot of good gateways. And uh, compared to the gateways provided by the banks, we have a really good uh, gateway called Pay here, which I also use uh, from my friend Danika. So that's it's a good service. Although they now since they are getting a lot of traffic these days, they are also having a few glitches. But uh, but that, so far that's a really flexible. And a feature-rich platform for Sri Lankans to uh, to uh, I mean to do their online business. And there are, there are a lot of other stuff like there are there are things like Freemi, Gini, uh, iPay, UPay, JustPay, like that. There are a lot of stuff. Uh, direct pay, so you can use. Uh, what are the upcoming marketing ideas with this current situation? It's really hard to answer that question in a uh, in a time like this. We are having only a few minutes to go. But generally, uh, so basically, uh, people will actually move on to more online uh, kind of marketing stuff. So, so that's actually going to be the trend for the next few months at least. Also, I also notice few people are scared to share their card details. I personally explain to my customers how can we educate them? Do a video. That's the best way to educate them. Do a video where you do a screencast like this and showing each step of the way. How do they? How can they pay using a credit card or a debit card and what they should not do and what are the information that you keep with yourself. So as a seller, you don't actually keep their credit card away. Right? Nothing is kept right with you. It's actually on the bank's end and everything is secured by the SSL right nowadays. So educate about all that and then most of those customers will will actually uh, not uh, fall into victim of that fear and they will actually start buying. This is my personal experience. I've been trying it all last week did a video on them, video screencast on how to actually pay online, sent it to them and they are okay. What is the name again of the gate? Uh, we have a we have few gateways. So pay here is what I mentioned. 
please repeat the recommend okay uh, can you give some instruction how to okay so chadika there's a problem called can you give some instruction on how to head headed to start a startup so that's a separate uh, series of lectures not just one <laughs> right okay what is the easiest online paying option way to client in our website so if you are selling to foreign clients pay paypal paypal but the thing is paypal doesn't allow you to get money directly into sri lanka so you have to have a address in another country or a registered business in another country and there are online services that provides that also so you have to pay a small amount to get an address on singapore and us or something some some other country where it's legitimate where you can have a pay you have a paypal address where you can get the money to a bank account abroad and then to sri lanka please can we get the slides well summarized lecture thank you Okay, that's that's what I can see. The questions. Anything else? I think we can finish it off, Neeraj. I think there are yeah, questions. Yeah, uh, if there is any the questions. further questions, yeah. uh, we can wait. Can we have a few minutes more. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they can even email, and we can spend even few minutes. Uh, on behalf of the ICT Skills Council and Tertiary and Vocational Education Commission, I take this opportunity to thank uh, Sanjay uh, for conducting a very uh, valuable session, uh, very informative. and uh, very productive uh, and thank you so much for spending your time uh, yeah. to share your knowledge uh, with this audience and also there is a series of webinars that uh, we organize uh, for this month uh, you will be notified uh, to your email and uh, uh, through our social media so i find request everybody to keep in touch with the ict skills council and uh, thank you very much for the participation we got uh, 70 plus participation for the session today uh, i take this opportunity to thank everyone and if you uh, can drop us a small feedback uh, about the session that will be really helpful uh, please uh, try to do that just a quick note if you want to contact me or anything uh, just search me on google sanjay lutigal and approach through my linkedin profile okay then we we'll, shall we wrap it up yes Hope thank the session you, was useful. Thank you very much, Sandeepa, for the invitation. Thank you, Sanjay. And thank okay. you guys for the really good. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you so much, Sandeepa. Thanks again. Thanks. You are welcome. Thank you.